In this video, we're going to use the XAM Data Grid Control Configurator in order to visually configure the various features of the XAM Data Grid Control in our Xamarin Forms application. To get started, we have to show or launch the Control Configurator. In order to do this, we're going to select the XAM Data Grid element in our XAML, and we'll notice a light bulb or quick action appear to the left-hand side. In order to launch the Configurator, you can select the drop-down from the light bulb quick action and select Configure XAM Data Grid, or you can use the keyboard shortcut key, Control.Enter, in order to launch the Configurator. Once the Configurator is launched, you'll notice that there are some required fields that must be populated before we can continue. In this case, we have the item source property. What we want to do is now create a binding to some type of item source that exists in a view model. We'll select the square to the right-hand side to open up our contextual menu and select Create Data Binding. Here, we are prompted with the Create Data Binding dialog. By default, the Control Configurator takes a wild guess at what your binding context will be by using a convention of page name plus view model. In this case, our XAM data grid is defined on a page called Main Page. So the Configurator automatically knew to go look for a class called Main Page View Model to act as the binding context. If by chance the configurator cannot guess the binding context correctly, you can change the binding context and manually navigate and find the view model of your choice. In this case, it got it right. In the list box, it's going to list all the properties that we have access to. In this case, I care about the people property, which is an I enumerable of person. I'm going to create the binding. Once the binding is created, the configurator will then generate a XAM data grid populated with all the columns that represent each property and the underlying bound objects, as well as display generated design time data based on the data type of those properties. As you can see, I have 15 rows of sample data. How do I know that? Well, if I look on the left-hand side in the sample data tab, I'll see a row count of 15. I can easily change this to say 25, and now I have 25 rows of sample data. By default, every property will be represented as a column in the XAM data grid control. As you can see, those columns are squished in order to fit the visible size of the XAM data grid control. Well, this doesn't look very good from our perspective, but this is easily fixed. I can add a minimum width of 120 to each column. This will allow me to horizontally scroll and see each of the values in each column. But in this case, I don't want to generate a column for every property in my underlying object. I want to choose specifically which columns to show. So I'm going to set the minimum width back to zero. And in order to control what columns I want to show manually, I have to start by unchecking the auto generate columns property in the property grid. I can also access this in the ribbon under the columns group. Once we stop generating the columns, you can see that we are prompted with information about the columns being required. We can now move to the left-hand side under the Columns tab and begin to manually add each column we would like to display. For example, I want the first name, last name, a job title, and a salary. At this point, I want to visit each column and configure it to meet the needs of my application. For example, in my application, I want the first and last name header to just say first and last. I don't want the column header to contain the word name. So I'm going to select the first name field and I'm going to modify the header text to say first. I'm also going to modify the width because I know I want the width to be 75 and not star sized. I want to do the same thing for the last name. I'm going to remove the word last and set the value to 75. I'll leave job title alone and then move on to salary. The first thing I noticed about the salary sample data is that it doesn't actually represent what will be displayed in my grid. So I'm gonna change the sample data to more accurately represent what I'm expecting. So I'm gonna go into the ribbon and under the numeric sample data group, I'm gonna change the minimum value to say, 50,000, and the maximum value to 500,000. 
I also need to format the salary to be a currency. So I'm gonna select the format string property and set the format to a currency. Next, because I wanna highlight the salary column, I'm gonna change the background to a color other than white, say green, the color of money. And maybe I wanna update the text color as well to black. Next, let's go to the header. Let's change the font size to say 18 and the text color to black. And maybe we want to bold the header. All right, that looks good. One thing I wanna point out about the columns is that you have complete control over how the column is rendered and what type of column to use. For example, on the first name, by default, it's a text column because it's a type string. But I could easily change this to say a template column. In this case, I would have to manually provide the template. For now, let's leave this as a text column. Now that I'm happy with the result of all our hard work in this control configurator, I'm gonna select the data grid tab and click on apply and close. I'm now going to format my document and you can now see all the XAML code that was generated based on all the settings we changed in the control configurator. Let's run the application and see the result. As you can see, the XAM data grid renders exactly how we expected based on the work we did in the control configurator.